I imagine for GCSE results day, you didn't do a lot of planning. Maybe plan what you were going to do afterwards, maybe plan how you were going to celebrate or what you were going to, or how you were going to open your results. But there wasn't a week's worth of preparation in advance for it. Unfortunately for A-level results day, things are a bit different. And in the few days left before Thursday, I want you to do some planning. In fact, I don't want you to do planning. You need to do some planning. Because on A-level results day, things are going to happen very, very quickly. And the people that have planned for it are going to have a massive advantage over people that haven't planned for it. Now hopefully on Thursday the plan will be get results, be happy, go straight to the pub and drink very responsibly. Um, but that isn't going to be the case for everybody so you need two plans in place. You need a plan if things do not go the way that you are hoping and then you need a second plan in case things go better than you were expecting. On my results day, I didn't get the A-levels that I needed to get into my first choice university, and neither did my brother, but both of our first choices still accepted us. So if you do not get the grades that you need, then check UCAS track and see what it says. If your offer has changed from a conditional to an unconditional, then brilliant, you're in. But if you do not get the grades that you need and you need to go through clearing or you get better than expected grades and you want to get for an adjustment place then you need to start planning now fortunately both plans start in the same way so it's not as if you have to do two lots of completely separate work for this it is just one lot of work and two plans both plans start by looking at the UCAS website and seeing what universities have what places available you have to remember that universities fundamentally are businesses and an empty place on a course doesn't make them any money. They want those places filled up with students and they want them filled up with the best students that they can get. So look at universities that have slightly lower entrance requirements than you're hoping for and pick your favourites. Look at universities that have higher entrance requirements than you're hoping for and pick your favourite and make two lists. Now, when you're looking through the UCAS site, think of slight variations to the course that you wanted. Now, for example, I did biochemistry with a placement. I did a sandwich course. Um, this was a year in industry where I went out and worked. Now, the grade boundaries at one university for biochemistry and biochemistry sandwich with a placement might be slightly different. So you might have to take your drink course and just change it ever so slightly to find one where you can get onto. Or you might have to go in and look at the actual modules on a course and say, this course title isn't exactly what I wanted, but the units on the course are really, really what I want to do. So there is going to be a limit in choice. There isn't going to be spaces on every single course but really do your research. Have a look at the courses that are available, what those courses actually entail. Could it be kind of like, you know, doing business with uh, French or business with psychology or engineering with psychology? It means that the great barriers are different. It means you can actually get onto your, nearly your dream course at your dream university. Or can you do your dream course, but at a not quite so brilliant university where it's not where you dreamed of going. Now, the reason you need these plans in place is that on results stage, things are going to happen very, very quickly. As soon as you cast track updates in the morning, then people are gonna be on the phone to clearing, on the phone to universities, picking up those spaces, picking up those offers. Now, UCAS will tell you whether you've been accepted to your university, um, whether you've got that place. It will not tell you your A-level grades. So if you check UCAS track before you check your A-level grades, you might have gone to the place. But then when you get to university, when you get to school and see that envelope, instead of those three Bs that your place was um, dependent on, maybe you've got three A's instead. 
Um, and you want to apply for a better place. You can do this via adjustment. Now, the process is the same. You still have to find somewhere that has a space for you. Universities can't just make up spaces for people, but they want those spaces filled with the best people possible. So if they have someone who wants to apply through adjustment, then the university is going to be happy about that. But you have to follow the correct procedure. Over my website, over on the playlist I've made for you, I've gone into this in loads more detail. So go and watch all of those sections of the video, read all those blog posts that I've made for you, so you are fully prepared for results day. If your plan on results day is to sleep in and then stroll over to school and pick up your results just as the school is closing, then think about that other student who has their plan in place, who is there first in the queue and then is then first on the phone to UCAS and is picking up the place that maybe you wanted instead. These places do not hang around. The people that have plans in place, the people that are organised, the people that are there early are going to get those places. And once those clearing places are full up, then the course is full up. If you've got your plan in place, but you are not fast on the phone, if you are not quick in making your decisions, then that place is going to be gone. I'll be live on results day at two o'clock to help answer any questions that you have. Uh, like I said, there is loads more information over on my website to help you with this. Um, so good luck guys. Any questions you've got, just let me know. Ouch. This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.